The story with Iowa athletics so far this February is not a Fran fade, at least not yet. But rather, the headlines have been captured by Caitlin Clark and the Iowa women's basketball squad. Caitlin on the verge of breaking Kelsey Plum's all-time scoring record. That's the women's basketball NCAA all-time scoring record. But on Sunday, news of something else took headlines. That was a post-game reaction from Hawkeye head basketball coach Lisa Bluter. We'll talk about the blow-up from Bluter after that loss at Pinnacle Bank Arena over in Lincoln in just a second. Very interesting storyline uh, coming out of Super Bowl Sunday. But first, I want to thank Randy Engel and his authentic artwork down in Mitchellville. He has got an awesome man cave down in his basement, and he's doing awesome artwork for a number of former and current Iowa Hawkeyes. And if you're interested in looking through the selection he has of these different Hawkeye prints, authentic Hawkeye prints, check it out. Check all the artwork out at underthekitchen.square.site. That's underthekitchen.square.site. Or as you see on the banner here, check out Under the Kitchen on Facebook. Just search Under the Kitchen or click the link in the description below. Appreciate Randy in advance for sponsoring the content here from the Hawkeye of the Storm. So yes, the Iowa women falling on the road. The second-ranked Hawkeyes losing to the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And by the way, this is not a bad loss. I know this is an unranked Cornhusker team. It's a really talented Cornhusker team. I was really impressed with the play of Jazz Shelley. Hit a big three late. Alexis Markowski is really a tough guard down low. I thought she caused problems for Iowa's bigs, although really didn't see much past Hannah Stolke. Did not see Sharon Goodman play, and we saw very few minutes for Addison O'Grady. But Iowa really just disappeared in the fourth quarter, especially offensively. Not a single make for Iowa's Caitlin Clark. And she did take six field goal tries. I believe four of those were threes. And there was talk after the game about how it appeared that Iowa was kind of deferring away from Caitlin Clark, perhaps to allow her to break the all-time scoring record back at home on Thursday against Michigan. I spoke with Kasheen Alexander, a former Hawkeye great Kasheen Alexander, on our live post-game show after the game on Sunday, and she kind of dispelled that narrative and said that's just ridiculous to even suggest that Iowa uh, deliberately basically took the ball out of Caitlin Clark's hand so that they could have that moment at home. And I tend to agree with Kasheen. I don't think that's what happened. And it sounds like Caitlin Clark was a bit under the weather. We know Molly Davis has been dealing with an illness. Caitlin was very congested in the post-game press conference. But speaking of the press conference, we had some interesting audio leaked from Eastern Iowa reporter Owen Sebring. This was caught on Sebring's external mic, and Sebring reports for Iowa News Now. This was caught on his external mic during Nebraska player availability. You can hear Lisa Bluter, head basketball coach Lisa Bluter, going off on a Nebraska official for what she called a migration from Big Ten protocol. Take a listen. I have a lot of special moments with my dad. We got a flight to catch. You know, I won several states. This is not Big Ten protocol. You can also hear Lisa Bluter in that clip complaining about music being played during some free throws. And I was not at Pinnacle Bank Arena for this game. It was a game I had marked on my calendar a long time ago, did not make it being Super Bowl Sunday. But it sounds like maybe some music was played during a series of four free throws that Caitlin Clark shot during the second half. She missed half of those free throws. And of course, Caitlin Clark, a really good free throw shooter. She said after the game that she didn't notice any music being played during free throws. And that's a good thing. I think taking the high road in that situation, I'm guessing that uh, Caitlin Clark probably had an idea that somebody heard the outburst from Lisa Bluter outside of the press conference room following the game. So good awareness by Caitlin Clark. Lisa Bluter did not end up meeting with the media. She did meet kind of poolside interview for like two minutes, but she did not meet with a formal press conference after that blow up. And, you know, I've heard from a number of people after this encounter, this uh, hot mic incident with Lisa Bluter, a lot of people criticizing the veteran Hawkeye head coach. And frankly, I think that's maybe a little bit unfair to her. Her track record is really sterling. She has had so little as it relates to off court incidents. She never, ever seems to have issues with officials during games. I thought she got irritable on a number of occasions on Sunday. Again, some of that's Probably rightfully so. But, uh, you know, does she apologize? Does she issue an apology for the words that were caught on the mic? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, I don't know that she doesn't have a right to be frustrated by the fact that her team was forced to stick around due to 
sounds like due to the Nebraska celebration on court that kind of slowed everybody up getting into the locker room. And yes, traditionally, the opposing team does head to the press conference and addresses the media first. In fact, I asked Kashin Alexander about that situation during the postgame show. Here's what Kashin said about the encounter. I mean, Lisa Blue is right. There's a reason why the um, opposing team, visiting team, whatever you want to call it, goes first. They have a plane to catch. There's other things. You can be there all night. <laughs> You're just going back to your bed. Um, so that she is right in that aspect. Um, I do think that there was a lot of frustration built up in general. Um, the refs were not great. Um, so I think that that also contributed to that. Um, and like you said, just overall frustration. She was she was over it, if that makes sense. How they treated them. Like you said, playing music, different things like that. It's just like little stuff that's just kind of petty, if that makes sense. Um, and we don't see Lisa Buda overreact often. So when we do see it, yep. usually we're like, what's really going on? Because she doesn't. She lets a lot of stuff roll off her back in regards to staying professional and having this kind of, you know, aura and look about her. So when she does get angry or upset or frustrated with something, it's usually for a good reason. I will give her that. So, yeah, call me a Hawkeye homer if you want, but uh, I can see, I can understand why Lisa Bluter was frustrated with the fourth quarter, with how they lost this game. They blew a 14-point lead in the fourth quarter. There were obviously some things that were frustrating, little uh, intricacies with the game, including maybe some gamesmanship, if you want to call it that, from Nebraska. And this is a rivalry. Uh, I'm not shocked that there were some little things that were done from the Nebraska side that may have seemed to be petty or out of line. But again, call me a homer if you want. Not defending Lisa Bluter's uh, statement there or the outburst or certainly the language. But I do understand some frustration. And knowing her, I would not be shocked to hear an apology issued at least at her next media availability. And I think it would be good to get an explanation as to what she was upset about as it relates to Big Ten protocol, what she called Big Ten protocol. And it was noted by an athletic writer after the game that typically Iowa charters a flight to Lincoln and back. So I don't think missing a flight was probably the issue, but it was probably just the principle of the matter. And why would you want to stick around after a loss in which, you know, you blow a lead and you're, uh, you know, it's your third loss of the season, second Big Ten loss of the season. And there's just been a lot of drama right now. Over the last week, a lot of chatter with Caitlin Clark in this record. And thankfully, on Thursday, that record should be broken, assuming she stays healthy and plays against Michigan back at home. It's a 7 p.m. Central time tip. And if you want tickets, you better be willing to spend thousands of dollars or at least hundreds of dollars for a seat in Carver Hawkeye Arena because that is a hot, hot ticket. One of the hottest tickets that we've seen in Iowa women's hoops in the history of the game. So anyways, wanted to address it. Certainly not defending Lisa Bluter, not her most praiseworthy moment, but uh, there's going to be frustration that bubbles over at times. And sometimes, unfortunately for her, the mics catch it and it becomes viral. So she's going to take her fair share of criticism and blame, but it is what it is. Her track record speaks for itself. And I'm not surprised that if this happened anywhere, it happened at Nebraska. Congratulations to Nebraska. I have no problem with the Huskers as it relates to the team, the coaching staff. I know nothing about them other than they seem to play the right way and they play hard and they are talented and the crowd showed up there as every road crowd does for Caitlin Clark and the Hawkeyes. So we'll see what happens Thursday. Just wanted to address that following Iowa's three-point loss. They dropped the number four in the rankings in the new poll that came out on Monday. Appreciate you tuning in for another segment of the show. Be sure to check out, if you've not checked out the merchandise here from the Hawkeye of the Storm, I am not wearing from the Hawkeye of the Storm merchandise. I actually wore the patented Big Ten blowout shirt for this segment, not because there was a blowout on the court yesterday, but because there was a blowout with Lisa Bluter after the game. Ha ha. Anyways, check out the From the Hawkeye of the Storm merch available via the link in the description. Hit the like button on the way out, and we'll talk to you next time.